Hello everyone, my name is Roger Fari and I would like to welcome you to another video. In this video, we are going to cover another fundamental programming concept, uh, Boolean logics and conditionals. Um, if you have done any programming, it is hard to imagine that you have not already come across this very basic foundational concept of programming. In this video, we are going to uh, be introduced to this um, concept uh, in the environment of Python and see very simple examples of it. All right, let's get started. So uh, by and large, the reason you would do um, conditionals or Boolean logic is the, is because you would want to uh, you know do something in certain situation. You want to have checks and balances to be able to say, okay, if these certain situations arises, I want to do something, or if these certain situations arises, I don't want to do something, right? So that's the reason that we have uh, Boolean logic and conditionals. And the syntax, uh, which is basically, what is the word syntax first? So let's cover that. The word syntax is, you know, the rules uh, of, you know, the way you would write down things that if you don't write them in that specific way, uh, the uh, compiler, in this case, Python is not recognized, is not going to recognize what you're asking for. So you have to follow a specific, um, you know, wording and rules that we call syntax for Python to honor your request. And the syntax for uh, conditional, is follows something like this you have an if which is you know the uh, signature for conditional and then you have parentheses and you uh, basically express your condition here and this could be you know we would see that this could be any any different things and then you close your parentheses so your condition comes between the parentheses and then um, you have uh, colon and then there is a indentation, right? Pay attention. There is an indentation. And then after that, you uh, express what you want to do. And that's, um, you know, syntax of conditional. So pay attention to uh, the syntax because, you know, if you don't get the syntax right, you're not going to, um, you know, be able to uh, run your code. If, uh, if you don't have a you do, if you don't have the syntax right, you're going to get a syntax error, right? So let's let's see a few examples here. So for instance, I could say if uh, true, which is a Boolean logic, if true, then print hello world. Right, so once I run this, because true is true, uh, it's going to run this for me. This is a Boolean logic. Uh, how about if I had said if false, right? So let me copy this. If false, then hello world. You know, it doesn't matter how many times you run this, uh, this is not going to you know, show you anything. The reason is you are saying if false, which is, you know, the logic, the Boolean logic for um, you know, being wrong or not okay or false, then because this is false, this is not going to uh, print this. Basically, every time you have a conditional, you either have a case of true, which is the green light, or the case of false, which is the red light, right? So let's see a more, um, you know, pragmatic example. For instance, I have A is equal to a and B are equal to 10 and 5. And I want to uh, say if A is larger than B, and uh, then I want to print um, A is greater than B, right? And if A is smaller than B, right? I want to print Pay attention when I put enter here. Do you see when I put enter here? This is where I'm just, you know, clicking enter. It just, you know, automatically indents the line for me, right? So pay attention to that. 
the Jupyter Notebook environment is helping us uh, to don't forget that we need to indent here and then then B is greater than A right so if I were to run this uh, this is going to tell me A is greater than B right because this one you know ends up being true and this one ends up being false and that therefore this one is getting printed how about if I increase B to 15 right so now B is greater than A you see how about if I put both of them on 15 what do you think is going to happen are both are going are both going to be printed actually no neither of them are going to be printed because these two both are going to be false and because of that neither neither of them are going to be printed all right so uh, let's let me challenge you with an example here um, if we were to run the following code right so a and b 154 152 uh, with this syntax uh, what should we expect when we run this syntax think about this uh, actually try not to run it and think about this and try to find the answer and then once you have an answer then you can run it or just continue watching so all I need to do here to you know sort of like check the answer is to uh, run it right so uh, what we are going to actually get if we run this syntax is an error the reason is we do not have that indentation that we talked about in the syntax right right this indentation is very critical and we don't have it and pay attention to the error message unexpected expected an indent block this is a syntax error and he said okay i need i want to see an indentation here so once you fix this indentation now this works all right so you want to pay attention that you have to follow the syntax of the programming environment for the programming environment to honor your request so next we're going to cover boolean logic what's a boolean logic it's simply uh, what comes in the you know parentheses of a conditional right so this is the boolean logic as we discussed right so for instance let me just go ahead and grab this from here right so a a and b let me create some chunks and let me say a larger than b what's going to happen what, what is going to be shown here it's true how about a is smaller than b it's false right so you can see by using these signs you can create a true or false and this is the boolean logic that we're talking about there are actually other ways you can create boolean logics if you remember b o o l bool is a reserved keyboard um, that you know we covered in the previous video so i could say bool right and say bool of 10 this is going to create true right or bool of one now any number if you got into you know this you know function bool uh, is going to generate true except zero right so if you have zero it's going to be generated well zero false how about 0 0.1 0 0 0 0.0001 it's still going to generate true how about a negative number still is going to generate true the only thing that's going to generate false is um zero how about bool of a string let's just experiment hello whatever string let's see what's going to happen it's going to be a zero how about a bool of it in a string that is zero guess what it's going to be it's going to be true let's see right it doesn't matter it's a string then a string right so uh, now we know what is a boolean logic boolean logic is either zero and one and you know we sort of like know a few ways to create it we know the greater than sign smaller than sign and this a casting function pool but there are other ways to create it and you know these are called syntax to create boolean logic we've already known less than 
right? We've already looked at less than or greater than, right? So these are the two that we've already been using. Kind of we drew, we drew on your uh, mathematical and logics from your from, from from high school that you have learned. So you already know these. But there are a few other things that we can also use. We have equal sign. Pay attention. There are two equals, right? For Python, one equal sign is a syntax for assigning. Two equal is a syntax for um, you know, checking if two things are equal. And then you have exclamation mark equal. It's the sign for checking if two things are not equal. And then you've got less than or equal and greater than or equal, right? So these are, um, you know, the different ways you could create a Boolean logic. Uh, so let's bring our code from before, right? This code. And let's, you know, make it a little bit better um, using, you know, these um, th signs now, right? So we had, you know, we started 15 and 5. Let's go back to that. Let's improve it by adding another conditional. If A is equal to B, pay attention, I've got two equal signs. Then print A and B are equal. Right. So once I run this, A is indeed greater than B, but pay attention if I do this 15, 15, now it says A and B are equal. So now we can, you know, because we have more ways to create Boolean logic, we can actually be more creative and you know, create more and comprehensive uh, solutions. Uh, another thing we can do is to check if a number is, uh, even or odd, right? Let's say we have a number called, let's call it C, and C is equal seven, eight, whatever, let's say seven. And if we want to check if C is um, even or odd, right? So we can say C um, percentage sign two, which gives us the remainder of the division of C by two, right? So this is an operation of Python that gives us the remainder of C division by two, right? Uh, is equal to zero, right? If this is equal to zero, print C is even. And if um, C is equal to one, so pay attention, the remainder of two can, can, the remainder of a division by two can either be one or zero. If it's one, then we know this is going to be C, C is odd, right? So let's give this a try. C is odd, even, you know, whatever crazy number you give it, it's just going to work for you, right? This is odd, this is even, right? So that's... Uh, you know, another way we could create such a program to check if a number is odd or even. Another thing we can learn here is we can do one line conditional, right? Um, instead of having to, you know, have two lines, right? Um, you know, everything we have here is like two lines. We can just do everything in one line. And it's very simple. Instead of, you know, going to the next line and having an indentation, you could just say if and then colon and then put your operation, right? So for instance, I can update this code very simply, right? So this and this is just going to run for me like before, right? Uh, there is one disadvantage here and is the fact that if you have one line conditional, um, you can only, um, you know, do one thing. You cannot do more than one thing. Whereas, you know, anything you have here, right? For example, uh, program is terminated. It's also going to be performed, right? Right, so if I run this, I, I, I will, get this to run as well but here i cannot do this it's going to give me a syntax error so 
uh, this is only going to be useful uh, sort of like you know make your code uh, more concise if you just have one line of code after your conditionals right another thing we want to learn here is if else syntax right so so far we have learned the syntax of if but we have another syntax that is very useful and is in every programming environment that you know you can imagine of which is basically is if true if this conditional is true do this otherwise or else do other things right so this is the a syntax you have if and then you have an indentation your operation and then you've got else then you know enter another indentation and another operation so do you remember our um, you know code that we created to see if some something is um, even or odd we didn't need to have two conditionals because you know the remainder of a division by two is either zero and one if it's not zero it has to be one so I can simply change this to else and this is going to uh, still work for me right so if I have for instance seven this is odd if it's eight all right so here's an here's an example here uh, let's be challenged by it so if we were to run the following code what do you think we will get uh, before trying or what continue to watch the video uh, actually consider this just by looking at it and see what you think you're going to get So what you're going to get is an error. The reason is it, there is a syntax error, right? Do you remember when we have if else syntax, else has to be in line with the if. If it's not in line, um, you, know, you know, the compiler is gonna come and look at this if else and say, okay, uh, since you're here, I need some if that is in line with you because there is not that thing there, then it's going to be a syntax error, right? So when you when you run it you're going to get invalid syntax the syntax error. of course it's very easy to fix let me let me keep the error here actually so you can say you know you can either you know correct this syntax right which is going to run for you and you know you could also be a little bit creative with you know other types of syntax for instance i can you know Instead of doing that, I can, you know, create them in one line, All right? So this is going to be okay too. Let's check together. Can we have one as with indentation, the other with one line? Let's just check. Yeah, it works, right? So this works too, but it doesn't look, it doesn't make for the prettiest code, but it does look, it, it, it does work. Another thing we want to learn here is the if else if syntax, right? So with else if, uh, you know, we are making our syntax a little bit more complex and this allows us to uh, be able to check for more than just one condition and it still be within the same conditional structure. So for instance, I can have if a Boolean logic and operation and then else if another Pay attention to the difference between else and else if, which is written as ELF, which is LF, um, is that you still have another opportunity to do uh, Boolean logic here, right? So with else, you didn't have that opportunity, right? You didn't have that opportunity, but L else if gives you that opportunity. So that's the difference between them. Of course, you know, you can have more than one else if, you can have, you know, one two three else, else if but at the end you can also have an else but you can only have one else right so you can have one if um however many time however many you want else if and then you can also have else just one else and also you can you know just have you know one line syntax if that's going to work for you so let me bring my code from earlier and make it better Right, so I mean this, I didn't need to have three ifs. I could have just done it with one if conditionals, right? So I say if A is greater than B, print this, otherwise, 
uh, which is else if right a is smaller than b and then instead of have anything else I just can say else right a is either greater than b or is a is smaller than b or they're equal right so by our understanding of you know mathematical understanding we know that this is a correct code so once I run this it will tell me a and b are equal and of course I could you know make this a little bit you know smaller version of this code I mean there are as many characters but you know there are less indentation so I could do something like this just as a matter of seeing that this would work so we can change the numbers and we can say a is greater than b so on and so forth another thing we want to learn here are about the two keyboard keyboard and and or these two keyboards if you write them they're going to you know be green and shows show us that these are reserved um, keyboard for python and the way they work is very simple right so you can mix boolean conditionals boolean logics with them right so there are four ways you can have each each of them right so you can have false true you can have false false and you can have true false right we can also have or let me just create all of them before running them i want to see if you would be able to guess what these are then false false then false true right so basically it's an operation between boolean logic you know and and or true and true is a boolean logic um, you know just draw it from your uh, high school education true and true is equal to true right false and true is equal to false right you know when you have false and anything it's going to be uh, false right so for an and operation to be true everything needs to be true but the moment you have one false then you have false of course false and false is going to be false true and false the same as false and true is going to be false with true uh, with or uh, you know as long as you have one true uh, you're going to get true right so you have true true false going to be true but in the case of false false is going to be false and in the case of false or true is going to be true right so these are the way we could um, you know use these two keyboards to operate for the uh, boolean logic but let's look at an example here together for instance um, you know i have a number i want to see if this number is divisible by two and four right so if um, a you know the remainder of the division by 2 is equal to 0 and the remainder of division by 4 also equal to 0 right if that's the case then print a is divisible by 2 and 4 right else right so else print a is either not divisible by 2 or 4 or is a is not divisible by uh, neither so we, we check uh, this code this gives us this message which you know say either is not divisible by two or four but we know it is divisible by two but not by four but if we choose 16 which is divisible by both then it's going to give us that message right and you know the understanding of this sentence comes from your understanding of the and and or logic operators let's look at another example 
a is equal 18 if a um, it's the it's the remainder of the, the division by um, 3 is equal to 0 or the remainder of the division by 2 is equal to 0 pay attention there is or then what should we be printing that this is going to be correct right so we would say um, print um, a is um, either divisible by two, two or three or both right only when it's not divisible by neither of them something like a prime number 19 then nothing would happen right because this would be false and false and then it would we would not see anything Another very useful um, you know, concept for working with Boolean logic and conditional is being able to negate them, right? Uh, one common mistake that you might be bringing from your exposure to other programming environment is you think that the negation in Python is exclamation mark, mark uh, because you saw it here. Right, so I mean, that's not the negation sign. Or the negation sign is tilde. This is not negation sign either. The negation sign is not in uh, Panda. So if, if, if not true, it's going to be false. And not false is going to be true, right? So it's basically negate uh, what you have. So let's take an example. So we have a and b, 10 and 11. So if not a larger than b, then print b is greater than a. So when, once we run this, uh, the B is indeed greater than A, uh, but when A is greater, nothing's gonna happen. I um, mean, you know, it's, you know, more like a, sort of like a challenge for your brain. It's double negative, not A and B. So if A is larger than B, but the negation of that, so, so it's like if B is larger than A. So that's why this is correct. Let's look at this example. Uh, look at this example, you know, challenge your brain and try to figure out what would be the answer here. What would, what would you get if you were to run this? Think about this before giving this a, you know, continue to watch the video or giving this a try on your computer. Again, this is an issue of an, um, you know, double negative, right? So we've got an not here. And then we've got another negative here. So the a string of uh, b divided by c, right? So b divided by c, 2 divided by 1, now 1 divided by 2 is going to be 0.5. And 0.5, um, you know, in the form of a string, is going to be this value, and a is also this value. So a is actually equal to this value. So these two statements are equal, but you're saying they are not equal. So this is going to be false, right? And then you negate that false. So this is going to be true. Therefore, if we run this, we're going to print um, this value, right? So let's give it a try. Let's see if my logic holds. There we go. Right, just a challenge for your brain to understand the negation and or and uh, all of the uh, syntaxes that we've been learning. Another thing we want to learn here is the fact that we can have nested loop, meaning that inside a, in, we can have nested conditionals, meaning that inside an if statement or a conditional we can have another conditional. Um, you know, it may it may be 
uh, obvious to you, but you know this is just something that Python allows, and you know it's good that it, it does, so we can use it. So let's take an example here. So we've got a. We want to see and print yes if a is divisible by three, five, seven, and eight, right? So how do we go about this? We say if a division the remainder of the division by three is equal to zero. And then another if, right? You see, another if nested in the first one, five. And another if, this time seven. And then another if, this time eight. Then if all of these conditions are met, yes, 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 or like true, 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 then print yes. Once we run this, run that, and run this, and run this, then we get yes. Anything else we put here, right? I mean, you know, it's not just going to run anything, right? You know we can you know do crazy things here as long as we have three five seven and eight right so i can actually get this to show me so this is the number um, it's just going to print yes for us you know if we add something negligible this is not gonna do that for us all right so Another thing you want to learn is the keyboard key, key, keyboard pass or keyboard pass. It's not keyboard, it's keyboard. I apologize. It's keyboard pass. The keyboard pass is another uh, reserved keyboard. So if you say pass, it's going to be uh, sort of in green. If you run it, Nothing's going to happen, just going to pass. And that's basically what it does. And it is used when you are in a nested conditional. And, you know, you don't want to mess around with your structure of your conditionals, but you don't want to do anything in that specific area. Um, so you can use the keyword, keyword pass. So let's say an example here. So for instance, A, uh, if, if it's A is nine, so if a divided by you know the remainder of the division by two is equal to one i don't want to do anything in this case only i'm doing this to sort of like get something done in the on the else and um, then i would print a a is uh, even so once i run this nothing happens but if only if it's even, I'm going to be printing. And uh, this passing is gonna sort of like be in effect when it's an uh, odd number, right? It just passes it. This is going to be very useful for conditional structures that are nested, you are within your loop, you've already created something, and you realize within your programming that you wanted to have done this in another way. So instead of changing everything, it might take a while, you just use the keyword pass. So that would be a very useful technique to have. Um, let's look at an example here together. We want to create a code that tells you by what numbers among 2, 3, 4, and 2, two 3, and 4, A is divisible, right? You want to say, it's actually tell us. It's divisible by 2, by 3, by 4, by 2 and 3, three and four, you know, whatever it is, right? So let's assume a number a is, for instance, is 13. And let's just do this together, right? So we can, uh, you know, start by the top. We can say if a, the remainder of a divided by two is equal to zero and, right? So we've got an and operation. We can also use another and operation. Then this one is three. And this one is four. So once we have this, we can say print a is divisible by two, three, and four, right? 
if it's none of them happens, we go to the else if, right? Then, you know, we check them two by two, right? So I'm just gonna, you know, avoid printing and changing these values, two and three. So I can have another two other else if, right? So that's just going to be the same structurally. So this is going to be two and four, right? So see how I'm going about doing this and this is going to be four and three. Right, I mean, I, I do care about what is shown here, three and four, but you know, inside my code, you know, I don't really, you know, pay attention that there is, it, it, it may have been better for three to come first and then four. But for my printout, because you know it's going to be seen, it's the product of my code, I pay more attention there. And then once uh, all of these are checked, now I can check you know, for just a single one of them, right? So let me actually copy this. And I say, let me change that. So this is just gonna be one. I don't need um, a logic operation. So this is gonna be two divisible by two. And I'm gonna need another one of these, right? Uh, three, this is gonna be three, four, four, three, four, and then eventually else we say A is not divisible by two, three, or four, right? So that's going to be um, our code. So we have selected AS13. 13. 13 is a prime number. We would get, we would hope, we would, you know, think that we were going to get this one. So we, once we run, run, this is going to be true. And then if we, for instance, multiply this by four, then this is going to be two and four because whatever is divisible by four is also divisible by two, right? So let's make this just as two. Then we see this two and then three. And then another two, which is going to give us this value, right? All right, so in this video, we were able to start learning about, um, you know, some other foundational concepts of programming, specifically conditionals. And even though our examples are very simple at this point, because you know we have to learn different things to be able to have more tangible examples of how programming actually to can do uh, can help us solve analytics, but we are getting there. All right, I'll see you next video.